Hey, good morning, scholars. Mr. Moore reporting here for vlog number two. We have three questions in two and a half minutes, and we'll see how quick we can get these done. How can a prison environment lead to de-individuation for a guard? Um, well, in a prison environment, it's very important for a guard to establish order. If order cannot be established, the prison environment will be chaotic and can be overtaken by prisoners. That would result in guards having to take even more excessive means just to reestablish order. That could be um, by them taking for by force uh, bed materials, um, making them eat in their rooms, not allowing them to shower, basically controlling every aspect of their lives just to regain control. And that's probably going to be by them making things up, not having things uh, done by procedure. Uh, the another aspect I, I think for a guard, a need of a guard is to have rapport, have relationships built up with their prisoners. When you're working with people day in and day out, um, being able to have that bond or know uh, what that individual's tendency is, is going to make uh, um, the difference between uh, being able to manage an individual in a prison setting or not. Um, and it also could be a matter of you um, having your life saved or not because um, prisoners do attack guards. Um, and if maybe if a prisoner's wailing on a guard, if you have poor buildup with another prisoner that's looking, that can mean the difference of them helping you out or calling for help um, for you or not, or watching you suffer. So I think it's very important for you to build rapport with the prisoners. And in the Stanford Prison Experiment, uh, none of the guards uh, really cared to build relationships with the prisoners. And I think that aided in you know the behaviors that were um, showcased by the, um, by the, by the prisoners. Um, second question is, how can a prison environment lead to de-individuation for a prisoner? Um, the prisoner loses a sense of identity by having their street clothes stripped of them and having to wear, you know, government state-issued clothes. In the case of Stanford Prison Experiment, um, the, the boys were forced to wear uh, female garments to be feminized um, and be stripped of their identity. And slowly but surely, you saw that um, their behaviors were being impacted by them being dehumanized, uh, embarrassed, um, talked down to by the prison guards. Um, the next one is um, basic needs like sleep. They are being sleep deprived. Um, and obviously the science behind being sleep deprived, if you know, you're know you awake for 16 hours, um, you need to go to bed for another eight hours. So um, we start to experience the um, the effects of sleep deprivation after 16 hours and um, being sleep deprived for more than 16 hours is unhealthy and it could even be similar to being um, under the influence of alcohol or driving behind the wheel drunk or impaired. So sleep deprivation can have an impact on your behavior, your performance and focus and in um, the Sanford Prison Experiment they would do night counts at 2.30 in the morning um, and sometimes to the um, to the point where they would repeat it over and over till they got it right to the satisfaction of the prisoners. And sometimes they would even uh, punish other prisoners and hold sleep as a, as a goal in mind. If, if, if the group didn't act a certain way, no one was gonna get sleep, okay? So everyone was pretty much um, a part of that during the um, Stanford Prison Experiment. Last question is this. We're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Do you feel this study was ethical and or necessary for psychology? Why or why not? So there's a lot of questions going in. Yes and no to both of them. Um, it was ethical to the point that it was written on paper and um, there was procedures um, put in place. However, um, it wasn't ethical because guards weren't trained uh, they didn't have proper treatment towards the prisoners, and you saw that the behaviors towards the prisoners escalated more and more and more and more. However, I do feel this is necessary because we uh, do have prisons in America, and um, <clears throat> it is very important for um, everyone to know that even guards can abuse their power, but even in a prison setting, your behavior um, is more likely to um, degress as opposed to improve because um, prisons are supposed to be places of rehabilitation and I think this Stanford prison experiment gave me um, an eyesight of how uh, prisons don't really contribute to rehabilitation and making an individual better. Um, it's also showcased that um, in the prison setting such as a Stanford um, experiment down on the bottom of the basement of Jordan Hall that, um, you know, they were just students, they weren't prisoners. So I feel like 
Um, a study like this should have been conducted in a prison setting um, by prison guards and people who were trained. Um, and I think there was just no um, established uh, requirements or criteria um, for the guards. Um, and I think that's why I kind of felt that it, it was unethical because, um, you know, they're, not everyone did their homework before starting. So, you know, it was necessary because it did bring light that, um, you know, our behaviors are, um, are um, you know, identified. Our, our behaviors are based off the role that we're in, the social role that we're in. So at the end of the day, um, this was a necessary study, but at the same time, it was unethical because um, there was a great amount of suffering amongst the prisoners. Have a great weekend. Take care.